Praise him, all the earth. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. This surely is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I need to announce that the flowers on our altar are given to the glory of God in loving memory of Ruth Spain on her birthday by her son, David, and family. This is the fourth Sunday of Easter, and we ask now if you will join us in our call to worship. Come, walk in green pastures. We follow the shepherd. Come, lie down in green pastures. We trust the shepherd. Come, dine at the table of abundance. We are fed by the shepherd. Come, dwell in God's house. We live in the shepherd's care. Our opening prayer this morning, we ask that you would pause and pray with us. It's based on Psalm 23 and John 10. Let us pray. Loving shepherd, you know our names. You care for us. When we face darkness and death, walk beside us. When we hunger for your love, fill us with your presence. When we are fearful, feed us at your table. May we dwell in the house of goodness and mercy all the days of our lives. Amen. Our hymn of praise this morning is hymn number 138 in the United Methodist Hymnal, The King of Love My Shepherd Is. Now we would ask you to arrest your mind from the things of the world and concentrate and rest on these words from our Holy Scripture. Join me now for our prayer for illumination. Living God, help us so to hear your holy word that we may truly understand 
that understanding we may believe, and believing we may follow in all faithfulness and obedience, seeking your honor and glory in all that we do, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear these words from Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Now we would ask that you would join us as we offer prayers for joys and concerns. We pray, of course, for all you who are still in, on your beds of affliction, those of you who are recovering, we pray that God's mercy will continue to attend you. We pray especially for Carrie Whitley, our minister of music, who is continuing to convalesce and is making significant progress in his recovery. And then we ask that you would pray for all those on our sick and shut-in list, and if you would, include those first responders, uh, those persons out in the mainstream of life who work so diligently to make sure we are safe and that our needs are met. Now would you join me as we pray for these concerns. Gracious Lord, our God, we humbly beseech you to hear our prayers. Be with those who are in distress, those who are hurting, those who are bereaved. We pray, Lord, that you would just help each one of us in need. Be especially with our leaders, the leaders of our nations, the leaders, oh Lord, of our local governments and all governments that you have ordained to help make our lives sufficient. We ask, Lord, that you will continue to bless this church and its members. We pray, Lord, that you would have your way. Bless us not according to our wants, our expressed needs, but, Lord, according to to your abundant riches and glory. And we promise to give you the thanks and the praise. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you join me now as we pray the Lord's Prayer? Praying our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Every now and then, it is my desire to make sure we express 
and affirm our faith through the World Methodist Social Affirmation. We ask you now to join us. We believe in God, creator of the world and of all people, and in Jesus Christ, incarnate among us, who died and rose again, and in the Holy Spirit, present with us to guide, strengthen, and comfort. We believe, God, help our unbelief. We rejoice in every sign of God's kingdom, in the upholding of human dignity and community, in every expression of love, justice, and reconciliation, in each act of self-giving on behalf of others, in the abundance of God's gifts entrusted to us that all may have enough in all responsible use of the earth's resources. Glory to God. Glory be to God on high. And on earth be peace. We confess our sin, individual and collective, by silence or action, through the violation of human dignity based on race, class, age, sex, nation, or faith, through the exploitation of people because of greed and indifference, through the misuse of power in personal, communal, national, and international life, through the search for security by those military and economic forces that threaten human existence, through the abuse of technology, which endangers the earth and all life upon it. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Christ, have mercy. have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We commit ourselves individually and as a community to the way of Christ, to take up the cross, to seek abundant life for all humanity, to struggle for peace with justice and freedom, to risk ourselves in faith, hope, and love, praying that God's kingdom may come. Thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Our hymn of preparation is from the United Methodist Hymnal, Selection 128. He leadeth me, O blessed thought.
this morning's sermon is entitled, Though I Walk Through the Valley. Would you pray with me? Thank you, O Lord, for this great morning. Thank you, Lord, for the abundance of your mercy. Thank you, Lord, that you have kept me and kept those who are around me. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. I think it very reasonable to say that this 23rd Psalm, this song thought to be penned by David around 1000 BC before the Common Era, is one of the cherished favorites of Christians around the world. It is often a required read in Sunday school, and because of its easily understood message, it begs most readers to be memorized. As a Sunday school student, I I remember that so many of my contemporaries learned the 23rd Psalm that my rebel mind forced me to choose the 24th Psalm just to be different. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and they who dwell therein. But oh, what a beautiful writing the 23rd Psalm is. David must have penned this on some lonely starlit night when the moon was full and the silence of the night awakened his passions as he tended the family flock in the lonely darkness. At least that vision satisfies my spirit and perhaps others as well. In my mind's eye, I can see David, a young lad, as he listens intently to the sheep under his protection. Perhaps the only sound he hears is the ba, baing of his sheep as they lay down for the night's slumber. It surely must have been a time that caused his mind to wander to the one who gives him strength and comfort for the lonely work that he was doing. Work which caused him to stay alert, alive and vigilant, lest his sheep be set upon by their natural enemies or something else that might disturb the tranquility of the passing night. The flow of these verses makes me know that David was more than aware of his dependence on the God of his understanding. David credits God with the surroundings in which he finds comfort and peace, places current or in his mind that brings pleasant thoughts of man and beast to his young mind. He seems aware that nothing he has and nothing he can do comes from the deep reservoir of his own giftedness. Oh, this man is more gifted than his youthful presence can reveal. His potential is immeasurable, and the depth of his understanding is only just beginning to be revealed in this writing. Yet he sees clearly that a power greater than the sum of all his knowing is there to guide him in his daily chores as well as through the rest of his earthly life. As I dissected these verses, I was struck by the observation that all the positive energy of his life, his rest, His slumber, his knowledge, his very ability to cope with his life comes from God who is his guide and stay, his purpose and his plenty, except the fourth verse. And for me, this was an aha moment of revelation. I noticed that throughout these verses, this fourth verse is the one verse where He leads. I I, I find it revelatory that the one place in the poem where David becomes the first person, the subject, this is where he expresses human weakness. God leads well, and God leads to all things good. But when David says, 
even though I walk through the darkest valleys, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. This is the common occurrence of life. All living species, especially humans, come to a bend or fork in the road when we tend to let go of the hands that birthed us, led us, fed us, and guided us until we seek to try life for ourselves. And like the young eaglets, which depend entirely on the mature eagle to prepare it for flight until that day, that hour, when it must try flight for itself. We too must try our wings in the world. We, like other living things, must let go of the hands that sustain us. David is saying what we all learn. Each of us must walk alone. And often we will walk through some dark valleys, some shadowy places when life becomes real to us. We do not all experience the same darkness. But when it comes, like David, we must remember the God we serve is able to keep us from falling, even in the darkest valley and the most severe test of our worthiness to meet the moment. Some might say that they have not ever experienced the darkness of the valley experience. Well, as some older folks used to tell me, just keep on living. Only a few of us will escape the journey through some dark and shadowy valleys as we navigate the twists and turns of life. Some might never taste despair or defeat, but the rest of us need a few hooks to hang our hats on and some tidbits of wisdom to help us through the darkness and shadows that loom ever more before our pathway. Over the years, I have adopted a few sayings that might help others in those dark times. When the pains of the moment have seemed to overwhelm me, I, I recite to myself, this too will pass. Sometimes when circumstances surround my efforts, I grasp a saying that a New Jersey prison warden spoke to her female prisoners. Everybody has problems. It's how you handle them that counts. In, in times when it seems that life has dealt me a blow, I tell myself each setback is a setup for a comeback. But the granddaddy of them all is my, in any circumstance, is even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Of course, when I sense victory, I'm not ashamed to tell myself, self, God will prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies. As I survey the realities of present-day America, I see the shadow of darkness ahead. It's not so much America as it is the mean spirits of some of its people. My personal experience has been that each time I see a light up ahead, there is something, some new provision, some new detriment, some new headache that seems to try my resolve and steal my joy. After I have taken a Tylenol for one pain, a new discomfort finds its way past the medication. Yet I know that love cancels out hate and strength of character overcomes the mean spirits that pervade our culture. Like David, there is one thing I am sure of, and that is that God sees. And God will keep my heart glad despite the coming darkness. As the psalmist said with more eloquence and grace than I, that God will give me all the substance I need, all the blessed assurance and Holy Ghost help 
I can handle. And not only that, but God will lift me up in the blackness that he himself created to a place of recognition and renown and do it in the sight of those who seek to defeat my existence. Oh, this 23rd Psalm is just right for the times in which we live. It is more than just a song, a poem, and a great piece of literature. It is a sermon for the soul, a formula for abundant life, and a promise of eternity all rolled into a sonnet. Upon further reflection, I can see more clearly what David was expressing. And not only was he extolling the virtues of a God who sits high and looks low, but he was turning a light on for the masses of those who eat hopelessness every day and drink the bitter milk of aloneness and desperation each hour. How uplifting it is to know and believe that the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I must not. I cannot lose with the faith I use. Amen. May we close with this prayer of St. Thomas Aquinas. Let us pray. Give us, O Lord, steadfast hearts, which no unworthy thought can drag downward, unconquered hearts, which no tribulation can wear out, upright hearts, which no unworthy purpose may tempt aside. Bestow upon us also, O Lord our God, understanding to know you, diligence to seek you, wisdom to find you, and a faithfulness that may finally embrace you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.